Hello there, everybody. It's Friday. So you know what that means. It's time for the same love. Fun Friday. Today's episode is a game called Hustle Cat. It's a game where you own a cat cafe and hustle. I'm not really sure what I'm getting into, but I know a lot of you wanted me to play it this week, so that's all that matters. All right, what is my name? Avery Gray. Oh, my God. Uh, first off, not at all. Select my photo. Mm. Well, I get the gray part. I understand it now. All right, so the whitest human being alive. Avery Gray, I can't change my... Jesse, 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 Jesse Gray, Fifty Shades of Jesse, nothing. I see myself as a he, him. My address is pending. My degree, yeah. Yep, this sure sells me. <laughs> sure it is. I think I fell asleep on the couch again. Oh, little lasers of sunlight are zapping right onto my face from the middle of the curtains. I think they've been specifically aimed to burn out my eyes. <laughs> what is it, like noon? Yep, that is an accurate depiction of me. Jeez. Not my fault. This couch pulls you in like you're drowning in bread dough. My spine pops in loud protest as I swim free from my bread dough cushion trap. I'm gonna have to apologize to Aunt Wendy for saying the word protest is protest. <laughs> I'm probably leaving a dent in the shape of my ass in the cushions. Probably have to apologize for a couple of things, actually. Okay, I know this looks bad, but it's almost not even my fault. I can't help that clutter is naturally drawn to my gravitational pull. Honestly, it makes me feel a little more comfortable, you know? Like I really live here, instead of just like I'm couch surfing at my aunt's. Or like I'm living in a furniture catalog. Not that I'm ungrateful. Aunt Wendy is awesome to let me use her apartment while she's away. She helped talk mom and dad into letting me come all the way out to the city too. You know, this is how some hentai start. Just put it out there. She's pretty cool. I hear rustling behind me like fingernails on cardboard. It makes me pause for a second. But I jump up and realize what it is. Hey, Mochi, knock it off! Oh, that's me. <laughs> that's my, that's my, <laughs> that's my voice. It's the, the pink threw me off. Hey, Mochi, knock it off! Mochi, the living trash bag disguised as a cat, stares up indignantly from inside the pizza box. He's trying to scrape some dried cheese off the bottom again. This little mushed up face is probably trying to stare me down, but it's kind of hard to tell where he's looking with those crossed eyes. Mochi! I clap my hands a few times to break the stalemate. He jumps the sound, then waddles back to the bedroom in defeat. I guess since I'm up too, I'm, I might as well get to whatever I'm gonna do today. I shuffle to the curtains and throw them open. My laptop is sitting open on the coffee table. Oh yeah, job searching, I guess. That's what I was gonna do. I flop back down to the couch, already sinking back into the cushions, and take a look. Jeez, there's so many tabs here. Which one did I leave Greg's list open in again? Not that one. This one? Or this one? Nope, porn. Nope, that's porn too. No, this is another cat video. I believe it's called Neko Porn. Uh, <laughs> I was up all night watching Jelly Donut, the cat who balances donuts on her head. I have no idea how you get a cat to do something like that. Guess that's why Mochi and I aren't internet famous. I find the tab and start scrolling through listings again. It's not like anything new has gone up since yesterday, I bet. Sidewalk cleaner intern, college credit only. Internet comment section proofreader. I could use one of those. Fundraiser street team intern, unpaid. Yeah, it's been like this all month. Can you really blame me for giving up and watching cat videos? I know this kind of thing is supposed to take time, but try telling that to mom, dad, or my savings. Any of those could send me back home at any time. 
and I really have to get this done before Aunt Wendy comes back. Just thinking about writing another cover letter is making my will to exist a road away. I'm gonna go for a walk. When I got here, I expected to be buried in noise from the city's traffic and crowds, but it's actually pretty quiet. The apartment is on a side street, far from the main street bustle. From here, the noises of the city are just a distant hum. It's comforting, like the buzz of an old tube TV. I'd have to walk like 20 minutes to get to the train from here, but I rarely leave the neighborhood, so it doesn't really matter. Still living the small town life in the city, I guess. Whatever, I get plenty of adventure in this neighborhood. I can just set out in any direction and find something new, even if I've been down that way before. Sure, I get lost a lot too, but that's half the fun, right? I turn a corner at the end of the block and head up a tiny street I haven't tried yet. Neatly arranged trash cans line the sides of the road. I think I'm behind some stores right now. I'm expecting a dead end, but the road suddenly curves to the right. It looks too narrow for cars, but the faded white lines marking the middle seem to claim some brave drivers could try their luck. I decide to follow the sharp bend in the road after I pass a tall partition. I'm surprised what I see. What do I see? A cat's paw! A squat three-story building, painted so ostentatiously bright it'd be impossible to miss, sits in front of me. A cat's paw? I was saying the same thing, man. Is this a pet store or something? Maybe I can get a dumb toy for dumb mochi. As I walk closer to the front doors of the building, I don't see the aisles of pet food I expected from the broad store windows. Instead, it looks like there are couches and tables and neatly arranged rows. Oh, so this is one of those pretentious restaurants with a pithy nonsense name, huh? I can feel my interest deflate and sink into my stomach. Just as I'm about to turn and continue walking, I notice the sign in the window that declares, Now hiring, inquire within! I'm hardly dressed for a job inquiry, but I might as well give it a shot, right? I look to my right as I walk up to the door and see a little orange and white cat lying belly up, sunning itself against the window. It doesn't seem terribly sanitary to have a cat in a restaurant, but whatever, I like cats. Bells tinkle delicately as I tug on the handle. The heavy door creaks open. This place is so classy, it feels fake. It looks like a game board exploded in here. Isn't that what the palace was like in Wonderland? Like, with the cards and stuff? Is a purple cat going to start talking to me? Though none of them are purple, boy, there are a lot of cats. I think I can count at least eight right off the bat. They're all over the place, romping on the floor, sleeping in some built-in structures in the walls. I barely have time to take it all in when I hear a voice call out to me. Welcome, please sit wherever you like. I hope that's a dude, because that's the voice I went with. I shuffle for a moment, at first unsure of where the voice came from, then of whether I want to sit or if I want to keep this strictly business. Uh, actually... I start as this- holy shit, who's that guy? That man's giantness caught me by surprise. I start as the source of the voice looms into view. He appears suddenly from the second story landing and covers the length of the floor in a few long strides. You look confused. Is this your first time here? Would you like me to explain a bit about how the cafe works? I'll be happy to give you a tour. His eyes are gentle. He's one of those people who smiles with his entire body. It's positively infectious. Actually, I'm here about the job. Actually, I'm here about the job. Oh. This pause is brief, but it worries me a little. Is it really that surprising that someone would come and ask about a job? Did I do it wrong? Oh, great. We don't get a lot of responses. I think it's because Mr. Graves only puts the sign up in the window. It doesn't want to advertise anywhere. Good thing I came in then, huh? You're right. His smile is broad, but his eyes creep to the back of the cafe like he's looking for an escape. Okay, uh, you can take a seat, and I'll go get the owner. He might be able to tell you a little more about what he's looking for. You got it. Oh, and what's your name? Avery. Avery Gray. Avery, cool. I'm Landry. Nice to meet you. 
Okay, I'll be right back. He bounds up the stairs and disappears. I begin to sit at a little cafe table, but freeze halfway as I hear a faint exclamation of dismay. It's followed by thundering footsteps, then by Landry's return. Every, I'm so sorry. What? I didn't offer you any coffee. Would you like some? Oh, don't scare me like that, sure. You got it. He vanishes into the back again and reappears, carefully balancing a stout white mug atop a black saucer in one hand and a tiny creamer in the other. Gently, he sets the mug and creamer before me. I forgot to ask how you take your coffee, so I brought you some milk. There's sugar on the table if you'd like it. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'll check with Graves this time. I mean it. Landry bounces. I don't know where I'm going with that voice. Landry bounces up to the back room and is again out of sight. The Siamese cat timidly peers at him as he goes, then directly at me with its wide eyed, worried look. Do no, I'm a Siamese cat! I give it an awkward smile and nod before I realize I'm treating a cat like a stranger in an elevator. I dump most of the milk and three sugar packets into my coffee before I can get it to a consistency I like. I pour what should be a little splash of extra milk, but half the creamer's worth spills in. It almost overflows. Meow! This cat's looking at me like it's offended by what it just did. What? Like a cat knows anything about coffee? When Landry finally returns, he's not alone. This is Graves, the owner of the cafe. Graves, this is Avery. He looks like he should own a bookstore that insists it sells tomes, not books. Or maybe like he sells crystals that balance your chakras? Or maybe this is what the owners of cat cafes look like I've never seen. Ah! Uh, his eyes, they're two different colors! I can't focus on both of them at the same time. Which one am I supposed to look at? My attention is sucked into his icy blue eye. Is he wearing a contact? To complete his dark renaissance look? I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. Yeah, uh? He had the eye of a vulture. A pale blue eye with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Uh, excuse me? Telltale heart, you were looking at my eye? Kids, didn't you read that in high school? Well, yeah, but... Aureus heterochromia, it's more common in cats than humans. What a weirdo! I'm not sure I want to work for a guy like this. Run, run, Avery! Oh, cool, I didn't know that. Might as well humor him a bit. This guy's gonna sign my paychecks. He can rattle off as many weird cat facts as he wants. Graves, would you mind telling Avery a bit about the place? I think it would be good if you talk about what we do here. Graves looks like the notion is causing him physical pain. I'm not too keen on this idea either, Chief. You didn't do that already? Don't you think it sounds better coming from the owner? You're gonna be doing the interview anyway. Good point, Landry. This cafe would collapse into rubble without you around to keep me on track. <laughs> All right, Avery. I didn't prepare a speech, so you'll have to forgive me. A little surprised to hear that, but I guess there aren't any Poe stories he can quote for the situation. I like to take care of strays. I like coffee. I like good desserts. I like beautiful room. I wanted a place where I could have all those at once. I like I like this cat. What is this? This cat right here is my favorite cat. It's like, I can't even be bothered to get up. And she's like, get up. Nope, ain't gonna do it. Get up. Nope, I ain't even gonna do it. Uh, where was I? I wanted a place where I could have all of those at once, and that's how a cat's paw was born. The cats here from the neighborhood. Usually they want to come here, so I don't have to convince them to come in. 
forever home. Pithy, hate the term. But the cats who want to be adopted are listed on the wall over there. I'm a good matchmaker for people and cats. I can tell who's a good fit for the cat's personality. If they meet my standards, they've got a new family member. It's good you help them find homes like that. Well, if I had the room, I'd just keep them all. He totally means that, doesn't he? Cool, I get to be interviewed by a cat hoarder. I don't know. It's probably better that way, right? Who knows? Follow me. We'll talk on the second floor. Before he finishes the sentence, he's already three steps up the stairs to the balcony. So much for the introduction to the cafe, I guess. I shake my head a little and follow him. After all, I really need the job. We make our way up to the second floor balcony, which, except for us, is only occupied by these amazing looking cakes in the display case. I wonder if I can get a slice of my way out. Graves leans down over the balcony of the cafe and raises his voice to the people below. Or to the cats, I guess, since cats are the only things I can see from here. Hey, will you get us some coffee? Is that the chef? I haven't seen anybody here besides him and Landry. Oh, I, I already had a cup. Is that going to stop you from another? You can't have enough coffee, especially when Hayes is the one making it. I don't think I've met Hayes. You may have, you might not know it yet. Guys, are all the cats people and the people cats? Is that what we're getting at? Is this all gonna be revealed because I see a cat that has two different color eyes? Guys, is that what this game is? Graves folds himself into the slender chair at the corner table. He pushes the opposite chair away with his foot, nudging it just enough to turn it towards me. Come sit down, let's talk. You don't have to be so stiff. Interviews are boring, make it interesting for both of us. No pressure, huh? Graves sits with this sort of grim pomp, like he's sitting in a skull throne and a raven's going to land on his shoulder at any time. Maybe it's more like he's about to roll a die with a lot of sides. I bet he's a nerd. Nerd? I take a seat across from him. Just so you're aware, we aren't starting without coffee. Uh, okay. You can talk, of course. I, I meant the interview. Okay. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a tiny slip of a blonde man standing at the balcony entrance. Yeah. I jump a little. When did he get here? I didn't hear anybody come up the stairs at all. Is this guy a ghost? Graves looks like the type to hire ghosts. He looks terrified by my shout. I think I scared him more than he scared me. He's like a bee. Gingerly, he sets two mugs in front of Graves. Thank you, Hayes. But you should give Avery the other mug. He sounds like he's reminding a child to say thank you. Uh, of course, of course. Hayes glances up at me. Our eyes meet for a millisecond before he suddenly finds something very important to focus on downstairs. He pushes the cup towards me without looking back up. Uh, thank you? Graves' ring clacks against the porcelain of the cup as he takes a drink. Perfect as always. I don't know what I'd do without you, Coffee. Ah, it's nothing special, really. He talks like it's the first time he's spoken today. Quiet and a little hoarse. If that's all, I'll, I'll go back to the cats. It's that's fine. Hayes slips back downstairs just as quietly as he arrived. That kid would make a great ninja. I look down at the coffee and see a sleepy cat face staring up at me from the foam. I've only ever seen Latte out on the internet before. Did Hayes really do this? I take a sip. It's not bad if you like coffee, I guess, but it could really use some sugar. There are packets on the table, but I can't bring myself to ruin the foam cat. Now we can get this going. Let's interview. I'll start you off easy. What's your favorite breed of cat? Uh, Maine Coon? I don't know, Tabby? Those cats with the stumpy tails? Cats that look like they're wearing tuxedos? I'm gonna say... Scottish Fold. Do you know any other languages? How about ciphers? Uh, I speak the language of dance. What marine animal would you say best represents you? Uh, I'm gonna say... Dolphin. 
What genre of music would you use to describe your work ethic? Chip tunes? On a scale of 1 to 10, rate me as an interviewer. 10. Draculas or Teenage Wolves? Draculas! Just kidding with that last one. Interesting. Good. I like interesting people. He leans forward, appraising me with this terrible smirk on his face. He's like the cat who ate the canary. Maybe I don't want to be interesting by his standards, but it feels kind of flattering nonetheless. Uh, thank you? You start tomorrow. Wh wow, great, thank you. Don't run off yet. I have paperwork for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Graves pushes away from the table, coffee cup in hand. He nabs my saucer, even though I'm not quite finished, and slinks down the stairs. He returns as if he never left, trading the empty coffee cups for a small stack of papers and a pen. He places them in front of me. So, uh, what will my job be? We'll see. Did he hire me with no position in mind? Is this how this guy usually works? I feel like I'm in a daze. Too much information, too much coffee. I take the papers and skim them, signing pretty much anywhere I see an X in a line. Well, what's it all for? Why is there so much? Probably taxes and stuff, I don't know. Who cares? I've got a job. I push the papers back towards Graves and he eagerly scoops them off the table. Perfect. We open at 11. Be here at 8. We'll have you help with the morning prep. My displeasure must be pretty apparent because his mouth cracks into another smirk. You can work the later shift after training. You won't have to deal with those cursed mornings for too long. Uh, okay, that's fine. Now go. I have a lot of work to do before tomorrow. You need to get to work fixing that sleep schedule of yours. Okay, okay. He seems lost in his own world now, poring over the paperwork I just filled out. I guess there's a lot of tax stuff you have to deal with hiring people. Why would he do it so casually? Well, whatever. Not my problem. I head down the stairs. Landry's back. He looks uncomfortable, waiting at the foot of the balcony, but perks up when he sees me. Sir? See you tomorrow, co-worker. Uh, uh, congratulations. You can meet everybody else tomorrow morning. I'll make sure they're all ready for a meeting when you get in. How many people work here? Well, there's me and Graves, of course. You met Hayes, Finley, Mason, Reese. That's it. Shouldn't take long to get to know them. Okay, great. I'll see you all tomorrow, then. Great, see ya. Wahoo! I'm gonna live it up a little. I'm gonna paint this town red. I finally have a job. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. My god, they're all cats. They're all cats, and I'm gonna fall in love with a cat. That is the premise of this damn game. Oh my god. Shut your butt. I'm super I'm I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening right now. 
I got lost and didn't end up painting anything, but it was a nice walk. As I headed home, I got the distinct feeling of being followed. I didn't really know that was a thing that actually happens, but it's hard not to notice when you see some movement out of the corner of your eye. I turn around, a sleek black- Yup! Look at that cat! Look at that cat! If this was in reality, if this was real, and I just applied to work at a cat cafe where all the cats were giving me weird looks and people came and went as if ninjas and the guy who signed my contract had two different color eyes and then later that night I saw a black cat following me with two different color eyes I'd turn to the cat and be like Dude You work at the cat cafe? Cause that's crazy I will keep your secret That's crazy as shit And he would be like of course I work there. I'm a cat. It's got different color eyes. I guess heterochromia really is pretty common in cats, huh? Should I, like, try to bring it to the cafe? They take care of strays there, after all. I, I should try. I crouch down as slowly as I can and reach my hand towards the cat, beckoning to it. It doesn't move. I make those little smoochy noises that seem to work on some cats. This one doesn't seem terribly impressed. It pins its ears back and looks away, still for a moment before standing up and slinking into the alley. I guess I should just leave this to the professionals. The professionals that are cat people that you will work with. And I assume, bang. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Where everyone talks like they're from the future. Hello, Arrows 4. Me, Jessica, the number one out of the plan. The bees, please, the tip top shape. I'm swell shape. And I'm gonna make a fortune for my ass for Shut the balls up. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Everyone talks like they're from Jump the balls up. UFO Commander, we are the future. We're gonna take you to the future. Then we're gonna get to the future. Everyone talks like they're from Jump the balls up. Give me that. No, no, no. <laughs>